The nation, it seems, is going to pot. One in ten Brits use cannabis, half of 16 to 24 year olds claim to have tried it, and the clamor to legalize grows ever more strident. But rather than wring our hands over the decline and fall of society, we're going to be a bit more constructive. 18% of all road traffic fatalities show traces of illegal drugs, with cannabis by far and away the most common. That is a six-fold rise in the last 15 years, and the reason why tonight we're going to see what happens when you mix dope and driving. Cannabis is smoked either in leaf form or as a compressed resin, but you simply can't say it causes accidents. The effects last for a matter of hours, but traces stay in the bloodstream for up to four weeks, which is why it shows up in so many post-mortems. Two years ago, the government commissioned research on cannabis and driving, but they used simulators instead of real cars, so the research was criticized. Nobody has ever physically put a cannabis user in a car and shown the results on British television. Until now. Meet graphic designer Gavin Campbell, a regular user who's freely volunteered and brought along his own gear. He doesn't drive while stoned, but is as keen as we are to find out what happens when you do. With the help of safety experts, we've devised three tests for Gavin to take on a private test track before and after smoking a joint. Now, we don't know what's going to happen. We haven't rehearsed this. So rather than retire to a safe distance, I'm going to go along for the ride. <laughs> As a benchmark, Gavin took the tests while perfectly straight. The first job was to stop safely at a white line. The second was a cheeky little slalom, and the third was parking in an imaginary garage, all done perfectly, although he did clip a cat at the end. Then Gavin smoked what he regarded as a typical strength spliff. Time for the moment of truth. Let's describe what's going on in your head now. It's hard to describe, really. Um, I don't know. I feel, I feel, yeah, lightheaded, relaxed, you know, at ease. So how does being at ease affect Gavin's driving? The stopping test requires distance judgment, like slowing to a set of traffic lights. On to the slalom test, which checks spatial awareness and medium speed manoeuvring. Did you find that hard? No, not at all. I can see no deterioration in your driving skills, your gear changes are still very good, uh, your, your speed's constant, you're anticipating the way you, you, you handle the car seems absolutely fine. How do you think you're driving? Um, I think it, it feels like I'm driving a lot slower and I tend to be concentrating a bit more on what I'm doing. Well, that's interesting because you're not driving slow, it's more or less the same speed, 25, 30 miles an hour. I can tell no real difference. Our volunteer's performance was reflecting some of the findings of the government's official simulator tests. Okay. No problems there. In the official tests, subjects were aware of their impairment and hence drove more cautiously. Exactly the opposite effect of alcohol, which is said to promote risk taking. It's hard to generalize, but you did a run when you were straight, which was worse than that. So <laughs> How do you feel about that? I feel good about that, yeah. Was it easier, more difficult, the same? Probably more difficult because I had to concentrate more. I mean, there would be cars either side, so yeah. that, you know, I really don't want to hit so any cars. If it was more difficult, why did you do almost better then than you did before you had you? It's paranoia crossed with concentration, you know. You're paranoid of what might happen, so right. you concentrate more on what you're doing. We took a step nearer to real life by throwing in a bit of distracting traffic. Gavin followed it safely and competently. We couldn't catch him out, even with an emergency stop. There's always a variance of effect, depending on the person, but after that one spliff and in our controlled environment, there was no obvious impairment to Gavin's driving. After his one spliff, Gavin passed these tests, but it might have been different if he'd smoked more. So where's the limit? Is there a safe amount of cannabis you can smoke before driving? Now, I know there are thousands of you at home advocating zero tolerance and that any trace of weed, pot, blow, black, resin, bush, smoke, ganja, call it what you will, should be considered a very serious offence. But hang on a minute. 
Unlike booze, cannabis is illegal, so there's no official dope driving limit. Like the breathalyzer, we need to find a testing system to establish how much cannabis it takes before your driving goes to pot. While we're as surprised as you are at the results of today's tests, I'm not emphatically not condoning drugs and driving or saying that this was remotely scientific or empirical. It wasn't. What I am saying, though, is that we need to put away the old stereotypes and cliches about hippies and reefer madness and get down to an intelligent, informed debate about drugs and driving, and we need to do that as soon as possible.